Tonight, a major development in the move to address the rampant use of psychiatric drugs to treat children in foster care. The numbers are disturbing. In California alone, children in foster care are four times more likely than other kids to be treated with psychiatric drugs. This evening, the state Senate approved a comprehensive reform bill that would restrict and monitor the system's use of prescription medication. It must now be approved by the state assembly and then signed by the governor. We'll have more on that measure in just a moment, but first, here's Melissa Chan. My parents were uh, uh, addicted to meth and they wouldn't feed me. Neglected, Tisha Ortiz would steal quarters to buy food. At the age of four, the state had already moved her into foster care, and by the time she exited the system, Ortiz was taking 12 psychotropic pills a day. How old were you when the doctor started prescribing you this medication, and did they ever consult you what you wanted? At 14 uh, was when I started taking these medications. At first, when I was at the mental hospital, uh, they sort of did. Um, I wasn't on that many. I think I was only on two at first. It wasn't until I went to the group home, they started adding more and more. The cocktail of drugs left the once healthy teen with serious side effects. I have like an irregular heartbeat. Uh, I have um, thyroid problems where it makes it very hard for me to lose weight. I felt like I wasn't really in control of my body. Can we go for me? Mariah Corder, another former foster youth, entered the system after witnessing her father murder a child. The only thing I remember is moving from home to home, placement to placement. Um, I was just traumatized. Mariah's reaction? Tantrums, screaming, throwing things. Doctors eventually prescribed her 20 different antipsychotics. I didn't have any, you know, issues. They were telling me I had bipolar, schizophrenia. Doctors prescribe psychiatric medication to about a quarter of teenagers in California's foster care system. In group homes, that number is higher. Half of all children there are on psychotropic pills. The state spends more on these potent drugs for foster children than any other kind. That's 72% of all drugs. What we're dealing with are profound emotional um, traumas in these children, and uh, there's no medication that uh, can address that. Dr. George Stewart works to take children off the pills. It's really hard for me to see children being mistreated because it is mistreatment by a system that doesn't provide what they need. Taken to task by lawmakers at a hearing this spring, administrators of the state's public health system responsible for providing care to foster youth could only say they're working on the problem. How many lives have been lost? We can't let another year, let alone a decade, slip by without real solutions. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I totally agree with you. Trauma-informed care is the way to go. And you've got some of the lowest paid people out there working in the group homes that have no training. I do think we are changing. Are we, are we there? Have we fixed no. it? Absolutely not. Well, those same antipsychotic medications that are used to sedate nursing home residents are used in group homes for foster children to sedate and control their behaviors. Greg Rose, deputy director of the state's foster care system, sat down with Al Jazeera to discuss the time frame for change. How does this change for foster children in terms of their experience? When will we see that change? We should be seeing change beginning now. We've published the guidelines. We've, pro we, the, we've published the, uh, the foster care um, mental health bill of rights. The state still reimburses more for pills than for therapists. Do you anticipate or hope that that will change? You know, we've worked together with our Department of Health Care Services to implement um, in, in, intensive in-home services, therapeutic behavioral services, um, intensive care coordination. State legislators hope to push change along by introducing several bills to combat the abuse and to make the Department of Social Services more accountable. I was misdiagnosed and mistreated by a doctor who only knew me from secondhand judgments she read from a notepad. The bills have received widespread support. Uh, the status quo must change. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Kevin Asley and Coalition California Welfare Rights Organization and strong support. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Mariah, now 15 and out of foster care, is finally back home with her mother. 
I'm going to college. I'm going to get a job. Um, I want to have a family that I can, don't put on meds. <laughs> For Tisha Ortiz, it's about losing the weight that came with the medication and trying to make it through college. From the get-go when I was younger, I always said I didn't want to be like my parents. I didn't want to become failures. What she wants to do after? Get a law degree to fight for the rights of foster children. Melissa Chan, Al Jazeera, Hayward, California.